Hello, so what I want to do right now is I want to show you how to do two other little techniques which are kind of cool. One is to be able to import and merge solids. So for example, this kind of cool shape has got a sphere that's been merged into this sort of pyramid shape. And two is to add text, and it's hard to see. I'm going to pull it off of here. But you can actually mold text. This camera doesn't do it justice, but you can have words or whatever you want written on the sides of these. And it's not hard to do at all, actually. It's really easy. So that being said, let's go ahead and get uh, SketchUp going. And I've already set this to millimeters like I did in the last video. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of her. Um, I want to make this about a 20 by 20, as I've done in the past. So I'm going to start off by grabbing my square. Now, uh, to do something like a square or a rectangle, slightly different. Uh, you're still just going to type directly in. I'm just going to grab it, make it any size I want. Okay. And now I'm going to type in my keyboard 20 comma 20 and then enter. And I've now made a 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter square. Let's uh, zoom in on it to extent so we can kind of see it or bit around. And I'm going to use the push pull tool to go ahead and make it a cube that is 20 by 20 by 20. So I just typed in 20, 20 and hit enter. And now I've got my cube. Okay. So from here what I want to do is I want to grab a solid, a sphere that I can work with. And you can do that by going to um, here. No, sorry. Let me find it again. Components. There we go. And I'm just going to type in a sphere. And I'm just going to grab one. Okay, it's going to import it. And I'm going to click. And I'm going to put it right on the uh, the origin endpoint here. And you can see by the blue lines that it has, in fact, done something. But what it has done is put an exceedingly large sphere. Okay, way bigger than what I need. So let's get an idea. I'm going to take the tape measure. I'm going to kind of get a ballpark idea how big this thing is. Uh, 23,000 millimeters. I'm actually not going to click. If I do, uh, it'll leave a measurement line. I'm just going to drag it around and not click. 23,000. Um, so we know we want to go ahead and reduce that by at least a factor of 1,000. Um, and probably work from there. So let me go ahead and grab the scale tool. I'm going to hold the control, although it's a sphere. I don't know if it matters. Drag it a little bit. And now I'm going to go down and type in 0 0.001. OK? So now I've made it a 1,000 times smaller. Now what I want to do is I want to move it into a working distance that, uh, or location that I can work with. So I'm going to grab the Move tool. And oh wow, it's so small I can't even. Oh, but it found it. Couldn't even see it, but it found the endpoint. And I'm going to drag that endpoint down to the origin and let go. So now we have two very, very small objects sitting there. But we're going to zoom to extent so we can see it. And there it is. Um, I'm going to move this object uh, up here so I can kind of work with it, kind of place it on top of my sphere. And you can see it's <clears throat> still too big for what I want to do. A uh, quick bit of measurement it should be, you know, 23 or something. Yeah, sure enough, 22, 23. Uh, let's make it uh, half that size. So I'm going to scale it one more time. And I'm going to drag it a little bit. And then I'm going to type in 0.5. And voila, I've now made it half its size. So now it becomes a little tricky. Uh, I, I can't find an easy way to do this. But what I want to do is I want to kind of put it in the center and kind of in my sphere. Oh, there, ooh, that worked out pretty nicely. So it just kind of popped into, I'm sorry, my sphere, my box. It's in my box. I'm going to use the orbit key to kind of reposition myself because now I have to pull it up a little bit. And this can be a little challenging. Let's zoom in some, kind of get it here. And I'm going to try to pull it up. Oh, and sometimes it pulls back, and you can see why this can be a, an annoyance. I might have to go to a different position. Oh, there we go. I got it up some. Now I'm going to use the orbit key. And I got 
think pretty lucky. That looks pretty close to center, and it's about where I wanted it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the surface of my cube because I'm going to scale it in some so I can get that pyramid thing going. I'm going to hold the control key and I'm going to drag it in. And that's kind of the look I was looking for. Again, I'm trying to do this really fast for you. It's not perfectly centered, but I'm going to go with it. I could spend a long time fiddling in with it, but I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so now what we want to do, actually let me show you one other cool thing. We can look at this and actually see the sphere embedded. If we go to styles, uh, in the default modeling styles, we can choose like x-ray. And if I click on this screen, it sometimes takes a while for it to switch when it's on the internet. There we go. You can see now I can actually see the sphere inside and I'll probably show you this again when I punch the hole into the bottom so I'm going to go back to its default style and again it might take a moment for it to switch I'm running on a web based it's kind of slow there we go so let's put some text on this guy this used to be a little harder because uh, now it seems to automatically figure out um, how to go against an angle so what I did is I selected the drawing tool we've been using. I select the text at the very bottom. Um, I'll put in George. This is probably was a much higher number if you turned it on first. Keep in mind my object's uh, 20 uh, millimeters high, so I'm thinking 3 millimeters is a good size height for the characters. And I don't want these to stick out very far. If you make them stick out too far when the the printer goes along it's going to just drip the the plastic down so it can build out a little bit you know maybe three millimeters but I'm just gonna make it one I think it's gonna be a, a good size click OK and I'm gonna drag it onto the surface where I want it like so and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the background just to kinda you can see that it was smart enough to figure out that it wasn't a flat surface and it's placed it along the edge automatically for us which is really nice. Uh, I'm going to go back over to the draw tool here I'm going to select the text again type in school 3 millimeters 1 millimeter again that's a good size for the thing we're working with right now put it right there Okay. Wow, we're moving along pretty good here. So let's punch that hole in the bottom uh, for the LED. In this case, I want a reference line. I think it would be easier to find the center because you know it tends to snap to centers. So I just drew a line from corner to corner. Now I'm going to choose a circle. And it should snap to center. It did perfectly fine and let's drag this out anywhere anywhere at all click and if you recall I think from the last video we decided about 2.7 millimeters is about right now I've put my circle in I'm gonna go back and delete my reference lines alright use the push-pull tool push it up uh, 9 millimeters to make room for the LED and there you have it. We've created a nice sort of uh, obelisk, for lack of better words. Um, let's go back and look at that in X-Ray. I'm going to click. And again, this might take a moment. And there we go. And now you can see the internal structure of what's actually happening, Okay, because we've made it an X-Ray object. So I'll go back over here, and we'll bring it back to our normal. Now this internal structure here, believe it or not, it's nice. In the new software, we're going to be able to ignore that when it comes to 3D printing. It's something we used to have to deal with by going in and deleting it, but it's just going to ignore it. I am going to uh, save this in my SketchUp folder and GS stuff. I'll call this uh, 
Dome 3. You can see I played with this a couple of times. Oh, no, I already did that one. I'm going to go Dome 5 just to make sure I'm going to get some room. Save. And now I'm going to export this as an STL. And it's going to pop up down here. Okay. And now what I want to show you is what this actually looks like when we import it into Repetier. My next video will show you how to do this yourself, but I think initially for the homework or whatever we ask, I'm going to have you email the STLs and then or upload the STLs and we'll put a group of these things uh, on the printer, printer platform. But I will shoot a video for those of you who want to do it all by yourselves. I'm going to load this. <clears throat> And it should appear in, there it is right there, Dome 5. And to give you an idea what happens, so you see this red, it's essentially saying that this is not good. It's sense that there's some structures in here that are not going to work. Um, it's saying that it uh, essentially has leaks. It's saying that if you filled it full of water, this wouldn't fill up with water uniformly. Fortunately, it's gotten really smart lately in the software and if we click this it should fix that and now you see it treats it as a uniform piece that it can work with and I'm gonna go ahead and slice it with slicer and I'll show you again a video on how this actually sets up so you can do it on your own computer and voila you can see we've got the object and if I show you single layers you can see exactly what the printer is going to do is going to print these layer by layer by layer going around with the robot. There's those text starting to appear. And eventually it's going to build a three-dimensional structure. Okay. So that being said, let me come back to here and I will see you guys again shortly.